Your investments are about more than money. They're about your future, enjoying a comfortable retirement or leaving a legacy for your family. Look no further than the Fisher Investments Guide to Retirement Income. It provides key investing strategies to build a portfolio that will help generate income for years to come. Whether you're looking to travel the world or hit the pickleball courts, we'll help you get there. For investors with a portfolio of $500,000 or more, go to FisherCanada.com to download an audio version and listen today. That's FisherCanada.com. Investing in securities involves the risk of loss. This Week in Gaming with Naomi Kyle. Hello, everybody. I'm Naomi Kyle, and welcome back to This Week in Gaming. This week, we're catching up on some big Halo news. Final Fantasy XIV plays nice. Scalpers meet their match. Alien Isolation is returning, and Power World goes mobile. We've got all of this week's gaming news, so let's get started. During the Halo World Championships, Halo's current developer, 343 Industries, shared with the gaming community what is next for the Halo franchise. For their first order of business, the studio revealed they would be retiring the name 343 Industries in favor of the studio's new name, Halo Studios. To mark the occasion, Halo Studios shared a seven-minute video of a tech demo the studio is calling Project Foundry. The demo showcases a version of a Halo build using the Unreal Engine. This is a groundbreaking announcement because it means that the future of Halo will no longer run on the Slipspace engine, a development engine that still used tools dating back to the early 2000s. Yikes. Halo Studios is currently working on multiple new games, and now that these games are being developed on a more advanced engine, I hope we can expect to see a new Halo title for the Xbox. Halo Studios says that the new games will be ready when they're ready, but that won't stop me from hoping for the best. I think it would be great to see Halo Studios try their hand at another ODST game. I loved the unique perspective that ODST gave the player. No power armor, just a standard issue AR and a dream. But of course, we'll be talking about that and everything to do with this new rebrand a little later on in the show, so stay tuned. Game developer Creative Assembly has officially confirmed the development of a sequel to their popular Alien Isolation video game. That's right, Alien Isolation 2 is officially in the works. Creative director Al Hope, who also led the first game, shared the news via Twitter, responding to years of fan requests for a sequel. The news comes hot on the studio's 10th anniversary of the original game's release. While details are still under wraps for now, Hope assured fans that more information would be revealed when the team is ready. The original Alien Isolation, which sold over 2 million copies, was critically praised but not considered a major commercial success by Sega at the time. Still, fans have been vocal about wanting a sequel and their wish has finally been granted. It's a good time to be an Alien fan for sure, what with the success of the recent film Alien Romulus and the upcoming FX TV series Alien Earth, which ties into the larger Alien universe. Can't wait to see what Creative Assembly has been cooking. Scalping has plagued the gaming space for years. Scalping was at its worst during the 2020 pandemic, when demand was high and resources were few. It was during the launch of the next-gen consoles that scalpers used bots to completely wipe out retailers' inventories in seconds, thus making it nearly impossible for the average consumer to get their hands on a console without having to go to online auction sites and pay 50 to 100% over retail. Sony has created a strategy, for its Japanese market at least, to make it difficult for scalpers to buy their latest product, the PS5 Pro 30th Anniversary Edition Bundle. For those wanting to get their hands on a limited edition console, a buyer must have a PSN account registered in Japan and a minimum of 30 hours of runtime on the account. When sales of the limited edition at PS5 Pro console bundles went live on Sony's website, PlayStation Direct, the bundles went out of stock quickly, but not instantly, marking a success for the new strategy. Folks here in the West weren't as lucky, however, as the anti-scalping measure was only implemented in Japan. Hopefully this is something we can implement more of in the future to help combat the scalping problem in the industry. 
Final Fantasy XIV is an MMORPG, or massively multiplayer online role-playing game, with a player base of about 30 million registered users. Among the game's many mechanics is a feature that allows players to buy land in cities where they can build a house for their character to live in. This is a fairly common feature in RPGs, but not so common in an MMORPG like Final Fantasy XIV. The main problem being that in an MMORPG, there can be millions of players, which of whom could potentially be interested in owning a parcel of land in the game. With not enough houses to go around, developers of Final Fantasy XIV realized that they had created a virtual housing shortage. To solve this dilemma, Final Fantasy XIV implemented an automatic editing feature called Housing Demolition, which automatically demolishes any parcels of land in the game that have not been used for a span of 45 days. Well, due to the destruction caused by Hurricane Helene, Final Fantasy XIV has decided to suspend all demolition until further notice, so that those players affected by Hurricane Helene don't have to fear losing their in-game homes from inactivity. Square Enix says it will continue to monitor the situation in the coming days and notify players when they plan to resume the auto-demolition function. When demolition is reinstated, it will continue from the remaining time when the pause first began. We hope that those affected by Hurricane Helene are safe and can begin to rebuild promptly. Pal World is expanding at a breakneck pace. After their success on Xbox and PC, Pal World announced during last week's State of Play that it was now available on PS5. We know for the time being that Pal World on the Nintendo Switch is not a possibility given the recent lawsuit between Pocket Pair and Nintendo. So where does Pal World go next? Well, Pal World is crossing over into new frontiers. You guessed it, Pal World is going mobile. And Pocket Pair is not going on their new adventure alone either. Developer PUBG Studios has agreed to help get Pal World on mobile devices around the globe. PUBG Studios is, of course, renowned for their success of their genre-defining title, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, otherwise known as PUBG. PUBG had released as a PC and console title in 2017, and within months of its official launch had been ported to mobile, where it went on to garner even more success, earning over $9 billion over the course of just four years. Does this mean that we could see Power World on mobile in the near future? Optimistically, I'd love to have Power World on my phone by February 2025, but realistically, I foresee the lawsuit between Nintendo and Pocket Pair turning into a long and drawn out affair, causing financial hardships for both parties, resulting in the delay or dare I say cancellation of Power World on mobile or Power World as a whole. But my hope is that will not be the case at all. Hoping for the best as always. And now it's time to go over the video games releasing this week. Games out this week. On October 8th, the DLC for Diablo 4 Vessel of Hatred enchants PS4, PS5, PC, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X and S. Silent Hill 2 Remake returns to the world of the living to haunt the PS5 and PC. And on October 11th, Europa glides onto PC and Nintendo Switch. Metaphor Refantasio forges a new bond with PS4, PS5, PC, and Xbox Series X and S. Transformers Galactic Trials and Nick Jr. Party Adventure jumps onto all platforms. Undisputed, Star Troopers Extermination, and Dragon Ball Sparking Zero teleport onto PS5, PC, and Xbox Series X and S. The Epic Game Store is offering two free games this week, Imperion Galactic Survival, and Outliver Tribulation, which will be available for download from October 10th until the 17th. Quest complete. So that's the news for this week. It's now time to chat with our guest, Rana Manuel Pena, who joins us to chat about all the big Halo news that just dropped this week. Let's hop right in. Select game mode. Multiplayer. Rihanna, welcome back to the show. So good to have you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be back for this one. Yeah, this one's kind of a big deal. Uh, kind of spur of the moment. We just, no one, so there were some rumors, but no one was really expecting an official announce, and it happened. Uh, Halo is officially back. Uh, it's yeah. the big thing. So, you know, let's talk about a little bit of the rebrand, because they sent out a video. It was a pretty long, in-depth video about the new studio rebrand, uh, what they're doing for the new Halo franchise and there's some big changes what do you what do you think the overall consensus is are people excited about this 
I think there's a lot of energy around it. I will say, at least in my channels and the outlets that I've seen so far, it's mixed. There are right. some people who are very excited, some folks who are cautiously optimistic. And of course, there's always people who are going to poo-poo and say anything in Unreal looks like action figures. But <laughs> I don't think that they're going to be the main public buying this uh, this new title that they're allegedly working on. Um, but yeah, the, the big news that uh, Halo is moving from their Slipstream engine over into Unreal 5 is humongous right yeah. like it's there's so many implications there they had invested so much in that other plop, uh, that other uh build that it just it didn't feel like it was working you know that's why i guess they're figuring out the rebrand uh, do you have any speculation about what 343 studios x343 studios uh, is now doing like why did they decide to change and rebrand and go from a completely different start on a whole new engine to build this game yeah, or whatever the next I mean, game for, is, we don't know. <laughs> yeah, whatever, whatever it is. Again, I yeah. have to say allegedly, right? Um, right. And and just to preface, I do work with Xbox uh, with a number of clients. This is not at all on my radar with my professional work. So this is purely speculation. I have okay. no inside information. Um, so I will speak very freely. <laughs> but I absolutely love that they've rebranded. I think it's important that. They focus on name recognition and, of course, nostalgia, but they have to bring in a new audience, right? The gaming public is getting older. The majority of people who play games are no longer on console. Like, the the flagship titles and IP have to evolve with the gaming audience. And rebranding 343 to Halo Studios makes so much sense in that vein because Halo does have name recognition, but a lot of folks out there who are in the prime gaming audience now either haven't played it or haven't played the originals. So going back to their roots makes a ton of sense in, in my eyes. And as I know I really love the visuals of the rebrand. It's giving me like Logitech vibes. <laughs> like, yeah. I like the half, like the half letters. It, it does look even more futuristic than Halo did back when we saw Combat Evolve. And I think it's a really good next step for them to really push forward with an entirely new engine and a, a good amount of new team members as we've seen some layoffs and some new hires. Um, and this new ethos of how they're going to be creating their games moving forward. So uh, we learned a lot in that video. As you said, it was pretty beefy. And not only are the developers focusing a lot more of their time and energy on the narrative and the gameplay and, you know, what can be brought to Halo that's new and fresh now that they don't have to babysit an engine as mm -hmm. much as they did before. Yeah, yeah. They, they also have new blood, right? And Unreal Engine has a lot more developers than Slipstream. Base or Slipstream, I can't remember what the name of the, the prior engine was. So they, they have more talent pool. That they can that they can take advantage of, which is really exciting, and something that I think is Elizabeth Van Wyck, the CEO, said uh, in the video was that now they're not focusing all of their resources and time and energy and even money on the engine. They can really pour even more into the games, which gives you know lots of big, fuzzy, even fluttery feelings to people who want to see more of that narrative part of the Halo team. Yeah, I was watching the the trailer, the in depth breakdown of their new studio, what their mission is, and I felt, I felt excited. I felt very like it, it had the nostalgia element, but it also felt like okay, this is breaking new ground. This is like we're we're innovating. We're really taking this seriously because I think a lot of people were left kind of wanting more uh, from past Halo games that they did lose like a big portion of their fan base, and Halo's like OG you know, Xbox One, like, so uh, yeah. Xbox, original Xbox, like, fans have been there from from this very start, and I think to do right by them is so important, like you said. Um, but any speculation at this point about what they could be working on? I've definitely read some of forums and stuff like that to see, like, what people are speculating, but do you have anyone, anything specific that you think they're definitely going to be doing? I do. So th this is something that I've it kind of just occurred to me earlier today, just taking in the fact that um, we saw uh, somebody from Epic in that video as well as, you know, the, the teams from now Halo Studios. Mm -hmm. And I think there are many projects brewing for Halo Studios right now. I would bet good money that a Battle Royale is 
getting an, an, another iteration from them. I bet good money that they're working on another narrative. I bet good money that they're probably working on a remaster or remake some kind of thing for either Combat Evolved or Master Chief Collection, depending on which one has the right dev time uh, for when they want to release it. But in order to put all of these out in the market, I can definitely see a Halo hub becoming a new product that the Xbox team would work on. Mm. Similar to how we see Fortnite has really become a hub for, you know, uh, was it Save the World, the Battle Royale mode, the racing mode. They have their, you know, their uh, rock band clone now. So yeah. like Fortnite's really become a hub for many different types of games. And Fortnite is the central unifying theme. We have a similar thing that we've seen from a recent buddy of the Xbox, uh, the Xbox team, uh, Activision, right? They have mm -hmm. the same thing for Call of Duty. You don't just get Call of Duty anymore. You get the hub and then whatever pieces you've purchased or pieces that are free within the hub, you click into them in order to play multiplayer or zombies or the campaign. So I can definitely see a Halo hub becoming the new product and they release multiple different types of experiences within the Halo universe inside that vehicle. Yeah, that would that's be That's so my cool. that's my big prediction. I love it. I think these are all it makes sense for the Halo brand. I feel like Halo lost some confidence. Now they're back. We they should have been at the forefront from the get-go given how big Halo Agreed. is as a franchise. Fans of the games, let's they just want to live in Halo. You know, they go back and exactly. play the old games forever. Uh, you know, time and time again, so it's like bring it back to the modern times. Let's play something new but still uh within the Halo world and so that we can, you know, just live there. <laughs> what do you think about the TV show now that that's happened? Do you think Halo has a chance, another shot at doing some sort of <laughs> television, movie, some other medium type of content? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. And I think it's interesting um, to ask that in the same time that we're learning their own Unreal, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because as we know, you can make some really pretty stuff in Unreal Engine. Yeah. <laughs> and I honestly see something animated in their future. I don't think they'll go back to live action anytime soon just to separate from the Paramount Plus series. Um, for, for better or worse, you know, that one did get a lot of attention. And it, it makes sense if they want to distance themselves from that and tell a new story with uh, yeah. a new group of people. Maybe it's a Paramount parallel or adjacent universe the way that the Paramount Plus series was, or maybe it's Master Chief and Agent Locke and all the people we actually know in, in the game universe. But I would personally love to see something around Reach or, mm -hmm. you know, like just like one of those sort of ODST side stories in yeah. an animated format. Uh, we've had some really fun moments with Machinima over the years in Halo. Yeah, I was just uh, about to mention. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think if they did one proper, it would be really cool. And yeah, animation is killing it right now, especially um, after on the heels of something like an Arcane or a Castlevania. Yeah, animation, even Vox Machina. I mean, it's not really game related, right. but it's it's like the animation world right now, and people who are attaching themselves to really good animated pieces of content, um, whether that's t you know series or movies, it's just really good at right now. It's a good medium, and I think it's safe too, uh, which is good. It's yeah. like take baby steps back into maybe the live action format or something even bigger like a movie. Pivoting a little bit, you know, Halo's a big thing this week, but there was also some stuff that Sony has been dealing with. We did see their presentation. They had the state of play not too long ago, but I wanted to touch a bit on the scalper problem that we have. It's not something <laughs> I've talked about on this show before, but Sony did face a lot of that, unfortunately, when they launched their 30th anniversary did you have any thoughts on that? You know, we did see, um, at least on the Japan side, they tried some different right ways to counter it or to fight it. But is there any way to beat scalpers at this point or bots? <sighs> it's such a <laughs> difficult challenge, right? Because people who want to make money are always going to be more motivated than the people selling the stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you know, hackers are always a step ahead of everyone else. And yes, there are ways to you know, whack-a-mole each individual technique or, or problem, but it will never go away. Yeah. It's just always going to be something you're constantly having to chase as as a seller and as a customer. Um, one thing that I do think would, in theory, help address the problem is if people stop buying scout things or stop buying mm -hmm. them at inflated prices. But let's be real, it's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> There's always somebody out there who wants it just as bad as somebody who wants their money. So... <sighs> I don't know there's a way to ever make it fully stop. You can always try to address each individual technique, but getting it to go away entirely, I don't see that happening. 
And it sucks. Like scalping sucks. <laughs> like, yeah. It's bad. It's bad for everybody involved. So I don't like it, but I don't know that there's a way to really eliminate it entirely. Yeah. I, I keep, you know, I'm like, I'm hopeful that someone's going to crack the code and figure out, a you know, a pretty good way to combat it in some way. Uh, like we saw with, first of all, you needed a PSN account and you needed to have played yeah, a 30 hours game like that. That's not yeah. a bad solution, um, whether it's foolproof, that's to be debated. But um, yeah, there's there's definitely a problem. I wanted to just touch on it because it was something that was in the news recently and we didn't really talk about it on the show. But Of course. And in the like the PlayStation 5 is obviously very yes. highly respected and coveted console. Um, that's right. I wouldn't buy one at its release price no. <laughs> for a pro. <laughs> right. Um, nor would I bl- would buy, buy one for all of the inflated prices. But I know a lot of people's heads were turned with that anniversary edition. I and know. They needed it. There's only so many of those. <laughs> yeah, it was a limited <laughs> supply. All yeah. right. Um, anything you're playing real quick that you wanted to drop a mention for people who are looking for something new to play? Yeah, I actually just finished a playthrough of a ranger on a trip that I got back from recently. Uh, played that on Steam Deck. It was really cool, really fun, different. Uh, gave me sort of Bastion vibes. Ooh, if you're I loved Bastion. into that game, and I'm a huge Super Giant fan, so yeah. that really vibed with me. Um, and something I'm looking forward to coming up that I cannot wait to play is Call of Duty Zombies. I can't Ooh. wait for Black Ops 6. I was not like, expecting that from you, but I didn't know you were such a huge fan. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm counting the days. <laughs> I cannot wait. <laughs> Zombies is just a, such a it's such a near and dear thing to me. Um, I've had a lot of great memories with, you know, me and a couple friends. Yeah. Just plugging away, trying to figure out what the hell is going on in that Ether storyline. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm excited to get back into it. I love that. Well, Rihanna, always such a pleasure having you on the show. Thanks for joining us again. Um, Of course. Yeah, thank you. I hope you come back some other time soon. I will. I'm around. Perfect. (laughs) Rihanna Emanuel Pena is CEO of DNR Media Consulting and co-host of the Danny and Rihanna Show. You can follow her on Twitter at the Rihanna MP. Flawless victory. Continue. And that's This Week in Gaming. I'm your host, Naomi Kyle, and I had such a blast bringing you the news this week. Thank you so much for listening. Shout out to my co-writer, Josh Seaman. And don't forget to let me know what you're playing and what you think of these stories by tagging me at Naomi Kyle on social. From all of us here at This Week in Gaming, we wish you a fun-filled week, and we'll see you same time, same place. Talk to you later. This Week in Gaming is an iHeartRadio Canada podcast. Subscribe to this podcast on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcasts. Download the iHeartRadio app for more podcasts just like these.